Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. All right, community matters. And this is the miracle of Hanukkah. Oh, this is one of my favorite shows. Rabbi Itchel Krasinjanski of Kabata, Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Rabbi. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, could Looking you introduce forward. the candles? What is the candles? Sure. This is uh, the Hanukkah menorah, the Hanukkah candelabra. Uh, in Hebrew, it's called the Hanukkiah. And the uh, festival of Hanukkah uh, is an eight-day festival, and we'll soon talk about that. So today is the second day, and each day we light uh, a candle for the corresponding day. So uh, today, actually we lit it last night, it was two candles, tonight we'll light three candles, and until we get to eight candles. So here, these are the two candles. All right, there you go. And, and, and in, <laughs> in, uh, in Hebrew, a CH is a ch sound, so it's not Hanukkah, it's Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah, okay. So for this discussion today, I'm going to call the Hanukkah. What, what about you, Manny? Can you call it Hanukkah? Hanukkah? Nice, yeah, nice. I'll done. go back to my, <laughs> my, my roots, if I can. Hanukkah, right? That's good. Oh, okay. That's okay, that's Manny Matos. Uh, he's a local boy, as you can see on the screen. Um, but he's also Jewish, because he, he has with him a DNA test that tells, it tells him he's Jewish. And he is sort of changing his persona these days um, to go from Portuguese to Jewish. This is good. Well, yeah, it's it's not totally Jewish. I have a lot. I have uh, uh, English, French, you know. Uh, so it's it's kind of, of a revelation for for yeah. me as far as my background. Yeah. But it's it's such an honor to be here with the the rabbi and uh, you know being some Jewish blood. I, I only have a little beard, so I, I cannot compete with him because. <laughs> so I guess I'm a little there, but not that much. <laughs> so, um, Manny, you want to just take your hat off so we can see your Judaism? What? Oh, take well. Take your ball cap off. I, 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 you got that, I, I wear this once in a while to hide my baldness. But, <laughs> but it, it was a gift uh, from a good friend of mine. It's called, in Yiddish, this is called uh, a yarmulke. The head covering is a yarmulke. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a Yiddish word, but it actually has its roots in Hebrew. Yarmulka means, it's a two words, Yira Malka, which means fear of heaven. The mm. purpose for wearing this covering for Jewish people, so we're always reminded of God above us mm. and, and have that fear and awe. Of yeah, I, 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 I was, that explanation was explained to me by my good friend. Lester, because his son got married now, uh, and he's very kosher Jewish, and all the men had to wear it. So this is one of the cherished things that I have from him. He's very no longer nice. with us, but... Very nice. Yeah. So we set this show up because it's Hanukkah, Hanukkah, yeah. and because Manny uh, has been on the show a number of times to describe his, you know, discovery and his journey on this, this issue. And, uh, and the rabbi uh, comes down, and I, I'd like the rabbi to come down on a regular basis. There are so many wonderful Jewish holidays and, you know, uh, culture uh, points. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. And I so the, today is an opportunity to talk about Hanukkah, and it's to uh, make, sure, make sure that Manny knows everything about Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of his education. <laughs> and there's so much about Hanukkah. It's a happy holiday. Very it's a, it's a holiday of success. It's a holiday that is, is unambiguous. <laughs> Can you talk about it, Rabbi? Sure. Before, before I sure. interrupt, could you give us a, a kind of an opening prayer with, with a Hanukkah, when you light the, uh, the, the candle? Like, it, nothing, nothing lengthy, it's something short that we, we can familiarize well, ourselves what, with. What I can tell you is that there are three blessings that we make the first night of Hanukkah when we light the menorah. And then all the subsequent nights, as I said before, there are eight nights to Hanukkah, all the subsequent nights we make two blessings. And the, uh, the, the uh, translation in English of these blessings, the first blessing is, blessed are you, God, uh, our Lord, King of the world, who has uh, sanctified us uh, with, with, with his commandments and commanded us to light the Hanukkah candle. That's the first blessing. First blessing. The second blessing is, blessed are you, God, our God, King of the world, that has performed miracles for our forefathers in those days, in this time of the year. That's what Hanukkah commemorates. And then the third blessing is like a, a generic blessing that we say on many occasions, and it's, blessed are you, God, 
uh, our God, King of the world, Shehechiyanu, that has sustained us, the Kiimanu, and uh, has given us life, the Higiyanu, and allowed us to, to arrive to this time. So it's a blessing of thanks to God for uh, giving us life so mm -hmm. that we can celebrate. Yeah, it's special. And, and, and given in Hebrew, of course, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, now, so, I've heard a lot about it as, as, as a young man and through the years, but I've really never understood, you know, the truth. And uh, that's what I've learned about the Jewish people and, and their faith is, really, their faith takes them on a continuous journey. You know, and, and, and it's, I think that's why it's, it, it was able to keep the, the people together for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, well, very, very, very true. From your lips. <laughs> so, uh, uh, if you want, I can share in, in a nutshell the story of Hanukkah. Yeah. And why, I love the story of Hanukkah. It's a beautiful story. And why it we is. celebrate it. So, so uh, first off, in the Jewish tradition, we have biblical holidays, meaning those special days, holy days, that are mentioned in the Bible, in the Old Testament, like Passover and uh, the festival of uh, Pentecost, um, and as well as the uh, Sukkot, which is in English referred to as the, um, when we have the huts. Uh, so that's in the fall, in yeah, September, in fall. October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll come to me soon how it's said in English. <laughs> so these are three biblical festivals. But in addition, there are two major rabbinic festivals, meaning that the rabbis uh, enacted that these days should be uh, special days, days of celebration and holidays. And Hanukkah is one of the two. Purim is the other one. Hanukkah commemorates a, a, a very, very special time, a very special event that happened in our history. It goes back to before the destruction of the Second Temple, about 165 BCE, before the Common Era. That means before, that's the same thing as uh, BC, right? BC, yeah, 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 right, yeah. right, right, yeah. When Jesus was born, ostensibly. Right, right. Yeah. And it was a time when uh, the Greek Assyrian uh, Empire, uh, that was led by Alexander the Great, we're, we're conquering nation after nation and building this, you know, this superpower. And they also uh, controlled Israel, biblical Israel, what we call today Palestine. It was a colony. It was, uh, it was a, yeah, there were Jewish people <laughs> living there then. And um, the Greeks were very big into their culture, and they looked to to uh, spread their culture and their philosophy and their way of life. So in every country that they conquered, they assimilated the people into the Greek culture. Well, they had a problem when it came to the Jewish people. First of all, they had a problem with Judaism. And it's interesting that our sages note that they didn't have a problem with Jews. It wasn't like in our generation, the Nazis, Hitler, may his name be erased, hated Jews. He didn't care what kind of Jew you were. Even if you weren't aware that you're Jewish, he hated Jews and sought to annihilate the Jewish people. Uh, the Greeks were different. The Greeks uh, had a problem with Judaism. They had a problem with the teachings of, 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 and the way of life of the Jewish people, because in many ways, it was a clash to the values and the principles of the Greek culture. While Greek culture deified man and the intellect, Hercules and uh, science, as being the highest uh, that exists within this world, the Jewish people um, believe in God that's even higher than that, higher than man. And while uh, the intellect is a very powerful tool and we are meant to use it to understand, we also recognize that there are things that are beyond our understanding, that are larger than what our minds can wrap around, themselves around. So we have faith. We believe in, in God and we accept uh, God even in times and in situations where it doesn't, it doesn't compute. This is a very age-old yeah. dichotomy, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they came up against a stubborn people. 
Stiff neck. Stiff neck people. Stiff neck people. Stubborn people. Exactly. <laughs> You'll find that, Manny. Your neck is stiff. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's not an orthopedic thing either. <laughs> you know, I, I was reading up, and and because uh, in our religious faith, in our Bible, we have Maccabees, first Maccabees, second Maccabee, and and uh, it's 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 a very beautiful. Uh, piece of uh, written That's material. It. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, and it, and, and it describes this great faith in these young, right. young people. So, I, yeah, I was getting to that. So, um, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, 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 go right ahead. So, um, the, uh, the Greeks, they um, outlawed Jewish practice. And specifically, they outlawed those practices that did not fall in line with their world views. For example, circumcision mm. for Jewish children, which is one of the, the earliest commandments in the Bible. God told Abraham to circumcise himself and all of his children, when they, when they become eight days old, they have a circumcision. The circumcision is referred to in the Bible as a covenant between God and, uh, and the child. Statement of faith. It's a covenant. It is a statement of faith, but it's more a covenant. It's an agreement. A covenant. A covenant. Covenant is a lot more deeper, it's right? Deeper than agreement. Yeah. So the Greeks outlawed that because, in their understanding, you cannot enter into an agreement with an eight-year-old child. You cannot surely enter into a covenant with an eight-year-old <laughs> child. You should wait until the child becomes 18 years old. And then you sit down and you talk it out and you explain. And if they agree, then you Let can enter decide, into, right? Then yeah. it's a meaningful covenant. But to yeah. take a baby when it's eight days old, but in the Jewish tradition, it's precisely when the baby's eight days old before it has a mind of understanding. Uh, we enter this child into this covenant, which is not based on rash, on reason and logic and appreciation. Based on reason and logic, it's it's a much deeper connection, covenant. So things like that, the Jewish Sabbath, the practice of the Sabbath was something that they uh, outlawed. So there was a group of Jews called the Maccabees. Mm -hmm. The Maccabees were, it's a Hebrew word, it's actually an abbreviation for a verse in the Bible where it says uh, when the Jewish people crossed the Red Sea and Moses led the Jewish people in song, there's a verse there where Moses says, who, like you, amongst the strong is God? In other words, God is the strongest. The real strong is God. So in Hebrew, mi kamoicha ba'elim Hashem is the abbreviation for the word Maccabees. So they were called the Maccabees. Oh, so, so it's an acronym. It's an acronym. How interesting. Oh, for, yeah, I never knew that. that. It's yeah. an acronym for a statement of faith in God, basically. Hmm. And this faith in God enabled them to stand up against this powerful, mighty, a Syrian army. They were just a family and with some, you know, with some recruits. And they pushed back the Syrians in the city that they lived in, which was called Modi'in, which is not far from Jerusalem. And when they were successful, Modi'in, when they were successful. Is that in Israel now today? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, it's a big city today. When they were, one thing about Israel, maybe we should talk about it in one of your shows, maybe do a, a trip to Israel. When you uh, when you walk on the streets in Israel, you're walking on history. Every part of Israel is 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 a living history. Of Man, you want to come along on that trip? No, I, when when he, oh, I would love to go. But when when you, when you mention Modi'in, yes, uh, is that uh, the Jewish word they use for their secret service? Uh, the, oh, okay. Is that is, is that any correlation between the Modi'in you were talking about and the? And the Jewish, uh, yeah, yeah, the Shin Bet. Yeah. Is, well, is that any relationship to that? Uh, no, but in Hebrew, Modi'in also has the meaning of information. So, yes, the the agency there, that deals with it deals so with. There, there is a correlation and a, a meaning behind it. Okay, okay, that that name came to my mind. So, um, <laughs> the story goes that when the, when they were successful in pushing back the Assyrian army in their little town. That emboldened them, and they rallied more people to go up to Jerusalem and to uh, push the Syrians out of Jerusalem and to take the temple, the second temple, to take it, to, to take it back because— It was a rebellion. It was, a rebe it was an uprising against the Greek Assyrian army. Okay. Because when the Greeks entered into the temple, they— um, they— um, they— uh, um, 
uh, what's the word I'm thinking? They, they destroyed. Uh, defiled. They didn't yeah. destroy. They, they defiled, defiled everything in the temple. Because it's they holy. Exactly. Because it's holy, and they, and they brought a pig. They brought it as a sacrifice because the pig. That's is, a defiling. Exactly. So they led this war against the uh, great Assyrian army, Greek Assyrian army. Assyrian today, it's not. It's different than Syria. Syria today is just one little country. But Assyrian. 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 Assyrian is not Syria today. Right, exactly. Yeah. And the great miracle, there were two miracles that happened. First miracle was that they were victorious in this battle. And as we say in the prayers when we thank God that even though that the Maccabees were few in number, even though they weren't trained soldiers like the Assyrian army was, but yet all volunteers. Mm. Yet they had the uh, minute men. They, they had the ability to, to to conquer and to drive the Assyrians out of Jerusalem. When they did that, and they entered into the temple with the purpose of cleaning it up and rededicating the temple. Which, by the way, the word Hanukkah in Hebrew means to rededicate, to dedicate. Oh, how wonderful! So that was the idea is to rededicate the temple. Now, one of the services that were done in the temple by the priests. There was a, a Jewish priest. A Jewish priest, right? There was a menorah. A menorah means a candelabra, and every day it was a it was an oil-based menorah, and every day they would light this menorah, which actually had seven branches. The Hanukkah menorah we have has eight branches, eight, eight can, for eight candles, and um, they they found the menorah and they cleaned it up, but they couldn't find pure oil. Because all the oil that was there stored in the temple <coughs> was uh, defiled. Was defiled. In what way impure. was it defiled? It was defiled because it was touched by the Greeks, and uh, and mm. anything that uh, comes into contact with a corpse mm -hmm. uh, defiles it. And there was dead people there, so everything was defiled. Mm. So this is holy oil. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't take too much to defile. Holy olive oil. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Holy olive oil. So, 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 so yeah, okay. So here we are. This, this is at a crux point. How, how are you doing, Manny? You oh, I'm it? learning a lot. Okay, yeah, me yeah. too. I'm learning stuff I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a short break. We're going to find out what they did when they found they didn't have enough good oil left to burn in the menorah. This is a very exciting time, and it has been, it has been a study among the Jewish people for all these years and a celebration. We'll be right back after this break, and you'll see what happened. <laughs> Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <music> All right, it's Hanukkah here in Community Matters. We have Rabbi Hitchell Krasnjanski of Kabbalah of Hawaii talking about Hanukkah. And we have um, um, a Jewish person <laughs> who is also a local boy Portuguese person, <laughs> Manny Matos, who is studying with the rabbi today. And don't worry, Manny, there's no test at the end. I'll, you mean I'll get a quiz? <laughs> no quiz. Not today. <laughs> so, Rabbi, we're getting to the good stuff now. They couldn't find enough oil to burn. Right. They needed enough oil to burn for eight days because right. that's what it requires. It needed enough oil to burn for eight days because it would take eight days to go where they had to go and to make new, press new olive oil. Mm. It was three days journey each way and then one day to make the oil. But they searched and they searched and they finally found one jug of oil that was hidden in the ground 
that still had the seal of the high priest on it, meaning it wasn't defiled, it wasn't uh, touched by the Greeks. So they used that one little jug of oil to light the menorah that night. Um, but the problem was it would take eight days for the new pure oil to be replenished and brought back. And this is the miracle of Hanukkah, that the oil that was only enough to burn for one night miraculously burned for eight nights. And uh, this is why we celebrate Hanukkah. And this is the celebration of lighting the menorah. That's why it has, there's eight candelabras here. You know, but it strikes me, it's more than one miracle. Oh, it's a miracle every day for eight days. A miracle every, every single hour. day. Yes. So, my goodness, it's going another day. Watch this. What was the really significance of lighting each, you know, oil on each day? What, where did, uh, because in the, in, in the Old Testament, uh, it says uh, Moses told Aaron, who was the high priest, that one of the services was every day that they every day they lit a candelabra uh, of seven branches, um, and when they rededicated the temple, they resumed uh, doing the service in the temple, including the lighting of the menorah. So, um, like I said. The miracle was that the little the, uh, pure oil they had lasted for eight days. So the belief is Moses was divinely inspired to do this, or it, is this something that he himself... Well, the Jewish tradition, oh, now we're going into another whole hour show, yeah. but basically <laughs> in, 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 a, in a 10 seconds, the orthodox Jewish belief is that Moses was like a stenographer. He just wrote down what God told him. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't his wisdom, it wasn't his inspiration, even though he was a great, wise yeah. person. Oh, but, but he, he this, is God's, this is God's word, and that's yeah. why we believe that the, that the Bible is eternal, just like God is eternal. Mm, so okay. nothing has changed. <laughs> and um, So how did they do in their, you know, rebellion? Um, did, did the oil have anything to do with the, the success so of their rebellion? So actually, that's a very interesting question, because they're actually two separate miracles. One is the miracle of the battle that they won against all odds. And the other miracle is the miracle of the lights. And there's a lot of discussion amongst the rabbis, why did they enact the holiday to be commemorated with the miracle of the lights and not so much with the miracle of the military? Mm. It would seem that the, the candle, the menorah, was just like a sideshow. That was like the main miracle was that they were victorious. And God forbid not, then Judaism would have, would have vanished. Mm -hmm. So the explanation is that, like we mentioned before, the battle between the Jews and the Greeks was not uh, a simple battle. They hated us and we were looking to defend ourselves. They were battling against the ideology that is represented by Judaism, which is represented by the menorah. The idea of pure oil and defiling the oil in the larger context represents they, the Greeks wanted to defile Judaism. They wanted, they wanted to keep the beauty of Judaism but strip God out of it. Because God to them was, was beyond understanding and they had no, they had no uh, patience for anything that's... That, it them. undermined their system. Yeah, exactly. Their, their, their total culture was at, yes. was at stake. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and the, the, so the that's light why of they, the menorah that's, exactly. symbolized their, their exactly. total culture. Yes. Exactly. So that's why, and the menorah symbolizes the victory. So, but that worked out very well, though, because it, when you call it the Festival of Lights, it's an up, it's an up thing, you yes, know. Exactly. It's uh, makes it, it's it's memorable. Yes. And uh, if you called it the, the the miracle of the rebellion, I'm not so sure it would have been as memorable. That's true. And so the festival of lights has lasted all this time. It's it's very robust. It's memorable. It's one of the most um, one of two really popular. In fact, it may be the most popular Jewish holiday year yes. round. Am I yes. right? Hanukkah and Passover. Because yeah. it's geared towards young, young Jewish kids. Also, that's why. that's why one of the things I forgot to bring, I apologize, Jay, what, Jay asked me, where's the dreidel? The dreidel is the top, the top kind of, that yeah. you spin. Yeah. And the story behind, and that's what kids play, and they bet money on it, you know, like cards, whatever. <laughs> and uh, the story behind the dreidel was that when Jewish children were gathered and studying, um, they had to look out that when the Greeks would come by, they had to quickly hide their study books and make believe they were just playing something. So they made believe they were playing the dreidel, dreidel. pops, the, oh. the, the spinners. 
It's okay. actually a, a dedicated to Hanukkah. Exactly, because on the dreidel, uh, there's uh, it's he, four sides or Four something? sides with four Hebrew letters uh, that spell out Nes Gadol HaYasham, a great miracle happened there, meaning in Israel. <laughs> so uh, the way the game is played is you spin the dreidel, and then where it falls on, on whatever letter it falls on, depends. If it falls on the letter Gimel, which is the big miracle, then you get to take all the money that's on the table. G for Gadol. <laughs> You're the jackpot, exactly. right? for big. <laughs> exactly, okay. yeah, yeah, things like that. So also, because the holiday really is connected to the oil, so also the food and the celebration uh, is connected to oil. So we eat what is called latkes. I don't know, uh, like potato pancakes that's Lockers, fried in yeah. oil. Yeah, I got to have some of that. That looks, that's all. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, it is? <laughs> as well as um, in, he, in Israel, it became popular. They, they, it's like donuts, jelly donuts, called sufganiyot, which they fry in oil. Mm -hmm. So this is how we celebrate Hanukkah. But in the larger, more, on a more serious note, Hanukkah is a great celebration of this miracle. The idea, our, our faith in miracles, we believe that God intervenes. And uh, a wise man once said, Ben-Gurion, who was the first prime minister mm -hmm. of uh, modern Israel, Israel, said that any Jew that doesn't believe in miracles is not a realist. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's quotable. Uh, Maybe there will be a final exam. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I got one question yeah. for you, uh, yeah. besides many more, but in, in, in the realm of all the different uh, Exodus and the miracles, where does the uh, Hanukkah gauge in the hierarchy, the hierarchy of, of miracles? You yeah, know? Very good question. Yeah. So uh, one would think that the biblical holidays are up there and the rabbinic holidays are like of second class. Mm -hmm. But the opposite is true. That all of, the, and this is one of the secrets of Jewish survival, that all mm -hmm. of the rabbinic enactments are observed not only with the equal commitment, uh, like the biblical commandments, but with even more, because there are hints in the Bible that we need to turn to our rabbis and uh, sages uh, for them to guide us and interpret for us the way forward based on the principles of the Bible. So when they enacted a holiday, it became accepted uh, with, with equal uh, fervor and dedication like a biblical holiday. So Hanukkah is way, way up there. And especially because it's a holiday that uh, commemorates such a great miracle, and for Jews, the idea of, of, of miracle, which God intervenes in our lives, is actually, like we just said, that's the reality of how we live our lives. And miracles are just are obvious godly yeah. interventions. But even that which is natural, and that just waking up every morning and, and going about Miracles life, are where you find them. Where yeah, and I, and I, I think, like how you're saying is, the actions of Jewish people and their determination is more of a miracle than God just reaffirms that, that miracle that they're, they're creating every day. But they're like the Maccabees. They created the miracle by the, the human aspect of, of their relationship with God. So God just blessed them and, and kind of gave them his blessings as with condoning their actions, I guess. Sure. Is, is that what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. And another aspect of Hanukkah which resonates with many people today is especially in our country, the, the freedom of to practice religion, the constitutional right that we have to practice religion, and not to be coerced uh, by any power. And that, was, that is the story of Hanukkah, that the yeah. Jewish people yeah. were being coerced by mm -hmm. the Greeks, and we, we fought a war to uh, free ourselves so of that freedom, freedom of religion. Freedom and of you're religion. still fighting a war, yeah, yeah, 2,000 years later. Right. But we're a little wiser today. Uh, a lot wiser, than I think. <laughs> Thank you, Manny Matos. It's great to have you here Thank in this you conversation. Thank you for inviting If I can just uh, invite our audience. Oh, please. Tomorrow evening, Wednesday, we're having um, at the Waikiki Gateway Park. That's in Waikiki, where Kuhio and Kalakawa Avenue meet. We have every year for the last 30 to 31 years very large public menorah lighting where people gather and we light the menorah and because the whole thing of, of Hanukkah is not only to 
commemorate the miracle, but to publicize the miracle. Mm. To be and, proud and publicize it. And, and to have uh, some latkes, too. I have latkes, too, for sure. <laughs> Don't forget the latkes part. <laughs> Thank you, Rabbi. Take your happy Hanukkah. Happy Thank Hanukkah, you. And everyone. Can happy I end Hanukkah. this with, is it shalom or shalom? Shalom. 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 Yes. Shalom. <laughs> In Hawaii, they say shaloha. <laughs> <laughs> shaloha. That's good. Thank you. Thank you.